At the Hall of Justice in Nuremberg, history's greatest trial nears its fateful close. Under the most elaborate security precautions, only official cars pass the heavily guarded street barricade. Flags of the victorious allies, sitting in judgment on the International Military Tribunal, fly over the court building. Supreme Court Justice Jackson, Chief United States Prosecutor, arrives. Credentials of spectators and officials alike are closely scrutinized, for it is amidst a grim and military atmosphere that 21 Nazis are to hear their fate. Sir Hartley Shawcross, British prosecutor, enters as the final rounds of the 10-month trial begin. The prisoners, headed by Goering, who shields his face, arrive under guard. The trial started with 24 defendants. One committed suicide, another was excused for health, and one is tried in absentia. There are 21 left in the dock to face civilization's accusation. These, then, are the men whose crimes against humanity brought about a trial without parallel in legal annals. It is doomsday and the day of reckoning as the court rises for one of the closing sessions. The world's finest legal talent has been contributed to the tribunal of four nations which takes its place. Russian, French and British are the other nations participating. The Nazi hierarchy is there to answer for 10 years of plotting of the Ribbentrop, Keitel and Kaltenbrunner brand, for the Goering and Hess fanatical cruelties, for the whole program of pillage and murder. Now it is civilization's turn to read their monstrous crimes into the record. Murder or ill treatment of prisoners of war or persons on the seas, killing of hostages, plunder of public or private property, wanton destruction of cities, towns or villages, or devastation not justified by military necessity. C. Crimes against humanity, namely murder, extermination, enslavement, deportation, and other inhumane acts committed against any civilian population before or during the war. For many weary months, a mountain of incredible proof is piled up against these men. Millions of words of evidence have been heard by the judges. Thousands upon thousands of documents have been examined by the finest legal minds of the four nations. Defense counsel wait with ill-concealed anxiety for the verdict in a trial conducted with scrupulous fairness for the rights of the defendants. Literally tons of paper were removed after each long drawn out session of court. For five savage and bloody years, humanity has waited for this moment of retribution when the insane ambitions of men like these would come up against the stone wall of world justice. Stryker, Funk, Schacht, and their colleagues. Eleven will hang, six will be jailed, three are acquitted. Sir Jeffrey Lawrence pronounces sentence. Defendant Hermann Wilhelm Goering, on the counts of the indictment on which you have been convicted, the International Military Tribunal sentences you to death by hanging. Defendant Rudolf Hess, on the counts of the indictment, on which you have been convicted, the tribunal sentences you to imprisonment for life. Defendant Joachim von Ribbentrop, on the counts of the indictment on which you have been convicted, the tribunal sentences you, sentences you to death by hanging. Defendant Julius Stryker, on the count of the indictment on which you have been convicted, the tribunal sentences you to death by hanging. This is what awaits Goering, Keitel, Rosenberg, and the other apostles of death and hate. The only conceivable end for these merchants of aggression. And as they plunge the world into a bloodbath, it is fitting that they take their final plunge in ignominy.